the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment, but I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Sing to the Lord a new song, Alleluia, for he has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations, Alleluia. remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous in the sight of the nations. Alleluia.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the fifth Sunday of Easter is from Isaiah, chapter 12. You will say in that day, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, for though you were angry with me, your anger turned away, that you might comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation, and you will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be made known in all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitant of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds for the children of man. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies come cringing to you. All the earth worships you and sings praises to you. They sing praises to your name. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds toward the children of man. Rejoice in him who rules by his might forever, whose eyes keep watch on the nations. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be Epistles from James, chapter 1. 
Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of firstfruits of his creatures. Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness that God requires. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sixteenth chapter. Jesus said, Now I am going to him who sent me, and none of you asks me, Where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. And concerning judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We confess our common Christian faith and show love for one another by confessing together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Breaking up is hard to do. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. Don't lose me, baby. Companionship, friendship, mentoring, fraternity, communion, fellowship. These are valued gifts. And when these gifts are taken away from you, what do you experience? Who hasn't felt the anxiety of being left behind or now being alone? When two beloved are separated by death, the widow knows loss. When divorce tears a family apart, the children will go into a shell of worry or loss. When a student and his mentor part ways, they grieve the loss, the separation. And there's more. All of this is true because it is not good for man to be alone. And as we heard in the beginning, God made a suitable helper for him. From the beginning, God says that such isolation, loss, and separation, these are fundamentally not good. Therefore, it is right for us to grieve our, un our inability to gather together. It is right for us to grieve death that separates loved ones or divorce that rends a family apart or even a necessary end to a relationship. Because with loss comes pain. We are not meant to be, to live alone in seclusion, in isolation, or even sheltering at home. We were created by our Heavenly Father for community. He placed us into families, into peer groups, into villages and cities, into countries, into congregations. He does this so that we would support one another, that we would build one another up, that we would encourage and direct and even rebuke and correct each other. Within these communities, families, congregations, love is service. And our love then is shown in serving one another, being together with one another. That's what makes this time so uncomfortable for us. It's not, we're not meant to be alone, to be isolated, to be separated. And no amount of digital technology is going to replace the actual gathering together of Christians around his word. And the disciples in the upper room on the night he was betrayed, they too were distraught. They knew this kind of isolation because our Lord's catechesis of the 12 was this. But now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. I'm going away, and that's why you are sorrowful. Who has not known this kind of sorrow? The beloved teacher, mentor, rabbi is leaving, and they won't see him again. That's what he says. He's going away, and they believe that this, is, this means that they will be left alone. They've turned their back on their old vocations. Many of them have had to leave behind wife, mother, and father, brother and sister, friend or neighbor for the sake of Jesus, that is, for the sake of the gospel of Christ. And if he leaves them, where will they go? What can they do? Who even are they? disciples of Jesus. 
Many are still grieving this kind of loss. Many want Jesus to fill the empty place in their heart that is left by the death of a loved one or separation from someone. Many ask Jesus to come and sit in an empty chair at the dinner table. Many want Jesus to sit in seats of government authority to show this country actually how it should manage this crisis, to rule over this nation that appears to be on the brink of disaster going down the drain. Many want an obvious and active Jesus working firsthand in their lives as their friend and Savior should. They want Jesus to be present and active with them, their mentor and their friend. And Jesus has an answer to this longing, to this desire to be with him. He says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. It's to your advantage that Jesus departed because he departs to sit at the right hand of the Father. Yes, he's gone away, but this is to your advantage because from God's right hand, from the seat of all authority in heaven and on earth and under the earth, Jesus has not actually left you alone, but now he comes to you in a different manner, but he comes to you all the same. He comes to you and he's with you by his spirit, the Holy Spirit. Now what good is the spirit, you might ask? You don't need a pet dove (laughs) or a mighty rushing wind or some kind of fire starter. And that's usually all that people think of the Holy Spirit. It's just a bit part in the grand drama of the Bible. And of course, some attach all sorts of bizarre ideas to the work of the Spirit, like the Spirit enables us to play with snakes or to speak gibberish. And I would suggest that even Lutherans haven't been all that terribly great at catechizing the work of the Spirit. He is the bashful member of the Holy Trinity, after all. But today in our gospel and the weeks to come, Jesus tells us exactly who the Holy Spirit is and what he does for us. Indeed, there's a whole article in the Creed about, that confesses his work. But to that pressing need, that pressing need for Jesus to be with us, an active part in our lives, well, this is actually precisely the Spirit's work because the Spirit is Jesus' Spirit, proceeds from the Father and the Son. The Holy Spirit is sent to you by Jesus from the Father to testify, that is to bear witness, to show you Jesus in his word. Everything the Spirit does is to confess and to give to you Jesus. It's the Spirit who who spoke and worked through the mouths of the holy prophets of old to bring you the promise of salvation. It's the Spirit who speaks through the witness of the apostles in the New Testament. It's the Spirit who has brought to their remembrance everything that Jesus said or did for you and for your salvation. It's the Holy Spirit, known as the helper here today, the comforter, the spirit of truth, who made it possible for these disciples to confess the truth in a hostile world and to endure through all manner of suffering, even suffering isolation. Because when the prophets and the apostles, that is God's word, is speaking, Jesus is speaking to you. And when you hear, study, inwardly digest his word, you're hearing Jesus, you're studying with Jesus, you're receiving the heavenly bread that is Jesus. The gifts of Jesus are founded on the word of Jesus. And when you have his word, you have him with you. Because the word institutes and gives you Jesus. Thus, where the word is read and proclaimed, the air is filled with Jesus. 
He enters into your, your hearts and minds through your ears to convert you, to redeem you, to sanctify you, to make you his. And as long as Jesus Christ crucified is preached and given to you in his gifts, you have Jesus. You have Jesus that you need. The Jesus who saves you from your sins. And all this is the work of his spirit, the Holy Spirit. This is what we actually confess in the third article of the Apostles' Creed. God's honest truth. And it's not as if the Spirit has a small job. He's got a huge task. Because the Spirit of God that proceeds from the Father and the Son, he calls, he gathers, he enlightens, and he sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps you with Jesus Christ in that one true faith. That's not a side job. That's not a bit part in the salvation story. Because it is the Spirit who brings the proclamation of Jesus into the world. It's the Holy Spirit who gathers all the wayward sheep of Jesus back to him. It's the Spirit who enlightens your minds, who stirs up your heart with Jesus. It's the Spirit who makes you holy by bringing you into the fellowship of Jesus. And it's the Spirit who guards and protects your faith by preserving Jesus' word among you. Now the disciples were sorrowful because it appeared that Jesus would no longer be with them. And that's certainly what he said. Their human reason would not allow them to understand the words of the Spirit that Jesus spoke. It it was a good thing for us that he, quote, go away, For if he had not faced the cross alone, you would not have life in him forever. He went away, indeed, not to a far-off country, but rather into the loneliness of sin, the loneliness of your death. And thereby he opened the kingdom of God to you through the work of his Spirit. It's Jesus' spirit that is sent upon them at Pentecost that preaches the gospel and puts those words upon their lips so that that message would be proclaimed throughout the whole world and that you then would receive Jesus and everything he did for you, that it would be your own. Jesus hasn't left you, maybe in the manner of sitting with his disciples, certainly but he's just as present with you here and now, today, as he was with them in the upper room. If you begin to doubt that Jesus is with you, if you doubt that he has you in his mind's eye, if if you wonder if he's lost track of you, hear the word of Jesus. Christ is with you, and you are his. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you have been grafted into him by holy baptism. By Christ's spirit, your sins were declared today forgiven in the blood of Jesus. By the inspiration of the Holy Scripture, you sang the whole story of salvation in that hymn, Salvation Unto Us Has Come. And the Spirit proclaims that the bread and wine are Jesus' true body and blood in the sacrament, which is given for you for your forgiveness and the renewal of your faith in him. You see, Jesus hasn't left you behind. He still comes to you. He's still with you by his Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives you Jesus and everything that Jesus accomplished for you. And of course, Jesus is present with you. Where two or three are gathered in my name around my word to receive my voice and to feast upon my gifts. You are not alone. Christ is here for you today and always. In Jesus' holy name, amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus your Lord. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For all the baptized, that they would make a joyful noise to the Lord for the salvation they have in Jesus Christ, in whose righteousness they are clothed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all pastors in Christ, that they would be diligent in their studies, faithful in their prayers, steadfast in their faith, and compassionate toward the children of God they serve. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our children and young people, that they would be brought up by faithful parents, receive a good education, and grow into fruitful maturity for service to home, church, and world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the vocation of motherhood, that mothers would love and care for their children, and that children would cherish and honor their mothers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those who have been entrusted with earthly authority, that they would be given the wisdom to rule according to your will, to work for the well-being of the nation, especially during the present pandemic, and to enable justice and peace to flourish throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who suffer in this veil of tears, and for all who have requested our prayers, including Sarah, Marcella, Jan, Brad, Janet, Carol, Chris, and Sandy, Linda, Joan, Ken, Aaron, Brian, Dick, Carol, and Mike. That they would be comforted with the sure and certain hope of life eternal through Christ their Lord, knowing that a day is coming when no one will be able to take their joy from them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those who desire to receive the Holy Supper of Christ's body and blood, that they would be prepared to receive the blessed sacrament and repentance and faith unto life everlasting when we are once enabled to gather together. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who have gone before us with the sign of faith and now rest in Jesus, especially Michael Orth, father of Michelle Rush, let us give thanks to the Lord that we would be enlivened by the gospel and sustained in the one true faith until our last hour comes. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which is ours through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.